Good evening. Welcome to yet another episode of Brand Sutra Talk Series, My Conversation with Industry Trailblazers, where we'll invite our colleagues from different parts of the world to come forward and converse about their journey as a marketeer and share their experiences with us. Thus, we can learn from them. Brand Sutra Talk Series is the extension of my enduring endeavor to share knowledge and learning to all future brand custodians, creative minds, strategists, and future marketeers, so we all can come together to evolve as an industry and work towards to bringing more professional approaches and respect to what we practice. Today, I have with me my friend, Sushil Goswami, whom I know for many years now, passionate father, and one such great brand marketeer who has almost two decades of experiences working in India and also in Nepal now. The good thing about him is he has an exposure of working in both sides of brand marketing profession, the agency side and the client side. So I'm sure he will share with us some interesting tips from both the perspectives. He started as a planner with some of the largest media agencies in India, working on some of their blue chip global clients, and later has been part of one of the most successful Indian, but truly global brand Himalaya for almost a decade now. His expertise is in the field of sales and marketing, branding, media planning, market research, creating brand positioning, determining strategic business directions, competitor analysis, customer engagement, and business planning. I'm extremely grateful for such undertaking. During our discussion today, we'll also speak to him on some of these interviews which have encouraged such path breaking ideas. Sushil, welcome to Brand Sutra Talk Series. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. It's been always a pleasure talking to you. So yeah. thanks for inviting me here. And thanks for the kind words. Sure. Let me start with the first question. As a marketeers for many years, what inspire you to remain marketers forever? Only changing your role from agency side as a planner to the client side as a brand custodian. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, interesting journey. Like you mentioned, I started as a planner, and uh, the early, uh, you know, early years has always been important part of everyone's career. You know, and I have learned a lot of things there as a part of media planner. Uh, uh, in a lot of ways, becoming a marketer was a destiny, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, it happened. It happened. It kept happening, and here I am. But when when I look back and you know see a difference of what marketing provides or perhaps any other you know profile that we have in FMCG is uh, or for that matter any marketing uh, you know role is uh, the whole uh, perspective towards you know all four piece of marketing you know and gives you that expansion yeah, in um, uh, in looking at things and it's a wholesome package in that sense you know. I think what it also leads to your ability on how do you want to shape brands, you know, to in consumers' uh, mind. Mm -hmm. And I think it almost, you know, like, and I keep saying this, you know, it's almost like uh, you are creating, you are a modern age Brahma, you know, you're creating something. And, uh, you know, uh, the success of a brand or, you know, a satisfaction that you get from creation out of something is only... Uh, if you allow you, uh, you know, uh, to continue in this role, and that perhaps that's the reason why I continued in this role, and I relish and cherish all the experiences that I have, have been built over years as a marketer. Fantastic, you know, like very well said, you know, like you are, we are the modern day Brahmas, you know, like in a current context where we are kind of giving birth uh, to a to a brand Absolutely. So, yeah. to, to something that is going to be very important in the consumer life you know over a period yeah. of time Absolutely. Uh, you you've also worked in the agency side of the business where i'm sure 
you must have had many successful partnership with the clients then you know can you share some stories from your career in advertising life how it is different from working as a advertiser now no mm-hmm. i mean there are a lot of stories a lot of uh, you know a lot of challenges that uh, some clients are very open about sharing you know business challenges brand challenges and hence you actually take efforts to uh, you know solving uh, solving those challenges uh, uh, and i was working on a client uh, you know called biggest uh, chain uh, you know in india biggest retailer in india and uh, the challenge that we had was there were too many uh, you know uh, creatives uh, we i remember the you know there were almost uh close to 30 creatives and they were supposed to plan this them in 5 days because you know it's a 5 day sale and you have to ensure that uh, you reach to a consumer uh, with a right offer offer which will entice him and eventually he walks into a store so like you said as a planner you can actually figure out science in everything there is the, you know if you if you put your heart to it if you put your business mind to it you can figure out science and there's always stat and you know for most of the planner stats uh, is very close uh, to their heart uh, so i remember we you know sat down to figure out uh, the you know different age group the different target audiences whether it's mother whether it's youngsters whether it's male of the house uh, and figuring out their how we were ship pattern uh, because technically if you buying 5 days of inventory on media you are possibly buying everything you know all the spot possible throughout the day uh, because uh, those five days sale and hence uh, effective three days or four days of uh, campaign means that you have that much time to reach your consumer uh, so you bought all time man but the challenge is how do you reach the right uh, with you know right uh, audience or, or or reach audience with the right consumer uh, offer uh, so lot of uh, effort lot of science we put in to figure out you know what time man who watches is there a co viewership that exists where you know the family seeing where individuals are seeing and those days of course digital was um, not very uh, not very uh, not very expanded digital was for us but ott uh, platforms were not uh, so you it, entire efforts were based on you know uh, how do you schedule spot on television right. so we put in lot of efforts to figure out what time and we need to focus Uh, and we uh, you know ensured that the right communication goes to uh, that audience so it was i remember you know the whole effort uh, only scheduling bit i remember it took me uh, 24 hours you know uh, total because i had to i had data on one side and i had to see you know programming pattern for that one particular program saying that whether male has a bigger skew for that program to watch or female has or you know other parameter what age group and yeah. then decide which offer will uh, should run as a spot so it was a quite a robust uh, exercise but i think the whole impact you know really got maximized as a process and i believe that these small elements actually makes a lot of change uh, you know and more often or not and i include myself is when you actually make a media plan scheduling is the last part we focus on really Uh, because you know the main part is okay building programs and you know when of course nepal has no uh, tracking but grps and reach frequency and all those things that we do it in india but scheduling is okay you know scheduling can be done not a big deal but if you put heart to it i think if you understand what is the business challenge what is the consumer challenge what is the brand challenge then there is something which you can make a difference in plan and I, i i i strongly believe that precisely is the difference between planner a and planner b and if you don't have that difference then all plans will look similar you know and uh, there is a very classical question which i keep asking um, you know and let me stretch uh, on this slightly that uh, uh, you know the, and lot of time i have asked this to my own agency when you know that 15 to 34 is your core audience let's say female and scc a is what or scc ab and if you have five brands because most of the organization wants to build equity in one certain age group right so how would your five brand plan and you might be operating with different product offering to this uh, core audience but how would your plan be different you know if you were to only go by grps and reach and frequency there would not be any difference so how do you bring about that difference and while it is true for one you know one client with different sub brands 
for example targeting to same age group is true for, for targeting to same age group and there are different brands talking to you know the same so plans should you know look very similar so i think a lot of efforts need to be put in on that front to uh, you know have that differentiation have your plan much more strengthened uh, from one brand to another one client to another fantastic you said you know yeah. like there is a lot of science that goes there is a lot of thinking that goes yeah, through yeah. the planning process you know and that determines a planner to the b planner you know like how is going to different and how is going to make an impact on audience that you wanted to reach yeah. out to now as a passionate marketers yourself and now working as a uh, advertiser going forward what kind of marketing story would be more relevant especially in our part of the world see i think fundamentals of marketing you know remains same you know story telling remains same Yes. Uh, you know, everyone, and there is a saying that you know every marketer or every brand manager should be a great story storyteller. There's always a trick to whole game. Look, in terms of taking efforts in telling a story, uh, one, how do you tell a story, and what do you tell? Right. Both are important. One is, you know, what do you tell? A lot of actually, I have seen a lot of marketer in you know, their temptation to tell a story forget about, you know, what are what are they trying to achieve. you know what i mean is there a, is there a relevance of what they are saying you know and i've seen brands saying okay i have a b c d uh, and this is a technology and that technology and stuff like that and you know uh, to say it in a very uh, you know literal way consumer says that i don't give a you know a damn about it you know you have to tell me how is it relevant so i think all the market at the core will remain that whatever stories you are you know uh, whatever offering or uh, that you are trying to communicate is it even relevant uh, to consumer and second is then how are you saying it and i think one trick to this is how are you selling uh, staying it in a lot of uh, you know uh, creative partners like you guys you know help us uh, you know and we are not the you know creative bunch uh, you know that way and hence we have creative agencies on board and they help us to craft the story but i think as a marketer is also important to say uh, you know how smartly you say it and how fast you say you know i and a creative agency always have this temptation of saying a story okay i need 40 second to tell a story you know and a marketer will say okay i have 20 second you know that is what i can afford now you yeah. tell me how to do it right uh, but i think one common ground is important to understand that a, a great story you know can also be told in least words you know and there are enough example uh, and great brands have actually successfully achieved that few words says a lot you don't need to tell her so i think as a creative partners and as a marketer and you know, both have responsibility to craft that together right. uh, and this whole core i think remains same whether you talk about uh, the conventional media or you talk about new emerging media whether you talk about e-commerce in future or you talk about ai you know the, right. the fundamental um, uh, you know fundamental aspect of i am touching consumers heart Uh, you know, make them making my product offering relevant, and hence he is buying. That rule exists. How do I reach them, and how do I say it? Uh, yeah. Would differ. Uh, I think, and the, how do we say it also changes with the context. How things are happening around you. You know, whether you talk about, and you see a lot of brands actually talking uh, their message through a different context at this point of time. So context has changed, but the, I don't think the message has changed, and hence I think. Uh, that single focus uh, you know uh, both from a marketer and a and a creative agency is must uh, to win with the consumer is irrespective of uh, you know which medium you uh, go through i mean talk about e-commerce you know e-commerce uh, you know a lot of people have why people have changed the way they are buying uh, but uh, why they are buying remains pretty much you know at the core right it has not changed uh, of course e-commerce also is helping you to um, you know give more in, get more information of about the product about reviews and stuff like that which plays on your mind but at the end of the day uh, what touches you has not has not has not differed from a marketing point of view message which is relevant uh, you know uh, which is also delivered in the context and it is fast i think all these things are pretty much critical to be yeah. achieved uh, beautifully said sushil like uh, the big idea you know like uh, remains uh, irrespective of e-commerce or any new media opportunities you know and the uh, 
like you rightly pointed out the relevance of the communication and also the objective you know what we are trying to achieve with that yeah. communication is the key yeah. uh, uh, very nice uh, i i know you've been uh, you know like a successful planner for many years and you are fascinated with data you know because <laughs> from a planning background i'm sure now they say data is the new gold and the global experts are saying that because of the sea dominance of e-commerce like you pointed out you know and the algorithm used by them by using both first and third party data do you think there will be no role of brand marketers like us because choices will now be made by algorithm what we see consumers are going for more online activities yeah i mean there are enough example of course you know that where we seen that data has become a problem you know in many cases <laughs> where you know ai has uh, you know targeted uh, a consumer which is uh, for that the product category is not at all relevant and i i know uh, Uh, you know uh, there are some brands which which are, which is getting it very wrong uh, so too much of data also becomes a problem and i think you know as a marketer yes the source of data uh, has changed uh, how rapidly the data is available and i think technology has played a very critical role in getting the data live but at the end of the day decoding data you know is completely uh, you know is still in your hand uh machine decoding data would have a limitation of what he can think i mean it can't calculate the calculate the emotions right what data you know what emotions is triggered uh, to consumer to buy a certain you know brand or certain category uh, data so how do you decode that and ai i think still has limitation in decoding uh, data in possible ways especially on the emotion angle uh in that will remain limitation and especially uh, you know country like uh, nepal or you know for that matter india where there is a lack of homogeneous uh, clusters you know? so we have different regions we have different region uh, religions you have different cultures uh, you know language in india i'm sure nepal would be similar yeah. uh, changes every the di- at least the dialect changes every 50 km so i don't know how much ai can really help you i think ai is a uh, role here perhaps would be still limited to data collection how rapid i think it still depends on marketers ability to decode this data and then you know come back with uh, in uh, communication and of course data also this uh, whole you know like you mentioned e-commerce or digital for that matter uh, it has been a great boon for brands who have a limited distribution capability right like if you are to start a new business no more you want to you need to be dependent on you know physical distribution e-commerce has bought that advantage to uh, you know the your offering so which is a which is a great game but in terms of you know touching consumer lives making a difference uh, i am sure you will agree that ai will not uh, you know shell out the creative thoughts right <laughs> it's a world where you know the emotions are brought about with creative and creative still need you and me right so yeah. i think that will be a limitation very nice you know i'm very happy that mm-hmm. you know like we people like we, us will still survive most probably <laughs> we are here we are here <laughs> pretty much here yeah. but as you know when it comes to nepal there is always been challenge with data you know yeah, yeah. you talk you know in context you know and in in such circumstances what do you recommend as a planner to benchmark our planning particularly in the fmcg segments you know as i mm-hmm. also consider you the expert in this segment yeah. so uh, yeah especially lack of data perhaps no data right in nepal you hardly have any data mm-hmm. i think one critical aspect would remain is the quality of planning uh, mm-hmm. when i say quality of planning is you have to observe you know you have to observe what is happening around you uh, mm-hmm. especially consumer you know uh, you have to uh, and, and you know you have people you have, if you have to target youngster you have people around yeah. you you can see a lot of a uh, lot of uh, time needs to be spent in mm-hmm. just interacting with uh, consumers and i know that in fact you and me we have we, we had initiated some you know fgds uh, which happens weekly i am not sure whether they continue now but that was a part of only understanding this consumer yeah. you know with lack of data the only way is you keep meeting more and more consumer and now two things happen one is you get perspective of 
their viewing habit as one part of uh, important ingredient of how do you pl plan media second is also get a perspective towards their approach to brands to life as a whole towards family towards career which i think will give you a very interesting perspective on building activations right. uh, in fact building communication also for that matter i i am a planner i would ensure that at least uh, you know i spend uh, i spend good enough time with consumer and it is i i think it the term is uh, it is called as consumer immersion right uh, in india uh, i remember there are certain company where there is a there's a mandate that a new joiny uh, should mm -hmm. spend at least 15 days mm -hmm. uh, and they have a uh, they have a college goer as a audience so 15 days he is with that college kid roaming around everywhere he okay. literally sleeping with that person mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that he understands you know how, of what is what audience uh, you know you are talking uh, talking about there is one more company without naming them they ensure that uh, the first month of you know their stint is they have to go to a remote village they have where they have to spend a month with no access you know okay. and they have to sell the product wow you know as a sales so oh. one and it just it just takes you at par with what your consumer is living through and it's a very constant uh it's a very very constant process it should not happen every eight months every week you have done leave it it's a very constant process because i think one of the greatest the, you know impact of technology is how consumer is evolving how is it changing yeah. uh and hence for us to remain relevant in terms of what we do a constant program is very critical where you will keep uh you know getting exposed to your consumers day in day out Uh, so that it and those inputs then should be become very critical part of your planning you know media planning not only from a viewer ship point of view that's a easier thing to do like you mentioned you know uh, if i put a machine or a robot he will capture you know give 10 question i will ask you what you view and i will capture that but this is a very different interaction you know it's a interaction where you know as a as a planner even for that matter as a marketer you should be eager to know your consumer knowing your consumer will just take your planning to a next stage then it would not remain those five program on a particular channel this is what my media plan and like i mentioned that's the difference between planner a and planner b um so i think the quality to aspect how much you know we can bring uh, to table is uh, definitely uh, important and uh, another aspect out of this is also gives you a very good indication of what will happen in future with your consumer mm -hmm. whether they will start you know getting hooked to certain kind of app uh, whether uh, you know the career definition is changing uh, the societal problem that they are saying that view is very different than what you think uh, otherwise so it will give you a, a perspective towards future uh, that happen and i think third thing is you know when you think that there are smarter people in the world then you copy them there is no harm saying that you th you should say that others are doing it very right and i don't have resources at this point of time let me see what they are doing let me copy them but do it smartly you know so that they should not say that you copied so i think it's about consumer and it's about competition okay. but these are very generic points but how do you do it is important it's again i you know repeating myself it's not that you know 10 question what do you view what is the genuine interaction with consumer what do they and competition not only restricted to uh, you know nepal look at what is happening around you you know world what are new brands our brands approaching their business problems and you might figure out and across categories it's not re restricted to okay this is my category this is my competition brand and i should only focus on that open your horizon i think opening up is very very critical aspect of you know uh, when data is not available yeah, the whole exposure will help you to uh, you know decode uh, you know and come to your own story uh, which you can present to end consumers or client sure fantastic you know like uh, you rightly said uh, brand marketers like us we always you know have to focus around the consumer the consumer is going to be the central the another thought you gave us and i really liked it is something to benchmark with some kind of a successful brand in the category or maybe with a similar audience you know like yeah that as our benchmark for our planning yeah you know, really nicely said uh, in your long career both in the advertising uh, agency side and also as a advertiser you know like mm -hmm. this uh, as as a marketer 
Can you let us know about two campaigns which you feel very proud of? What was the mm. big idea and the process you follow to make that campaign successful? Two, yeah, two examples that comes to my mind. One was uh, during my, uh, you know, stint in media. Uh, I was uh, handling media for Future Group. I was part of Future Group, and we have a brand called Fashion at Big Bazaar. Uh, so the brand actually stood for uh, fashion for common people. You know, it's right. available quality clothes at a, at a you know very very uh, for a good price sensitive consumer, mm -hmm. a, a good fashion. You know, and we had uh, so we had to you know communicate that, and we right. thought the uh, and you know retail in a lot of ways is a very local business, right? You want local walking, you know, right. while you can build a brand nationally, but at the end of the day, business comes from local walking. So. We had this activation thought, interesting activation thought, saying that you know, for a lot of cities, the heroes, their heroes, are uh, RJs of the town. You know, for a lot of youngsters, aspiration. Uh, you know, RJs are big. Uh, so we said, how do we leverage? And as a brand, we had a hefty investment on uh, radio uh, stations going. Today, of course, RJs are more active and they participate in a lot of social events. Those days, RJs were not seen by common common people. Mm. So they were known by their voice and not by their face. Also very conscious policy, by the way, those days for radio station that, uh, you know, when some, when a viewer or when a, sorry, when a listener actually listen, uh, sees the face, then there's some kind of dissonance which happens and hence radio station always had this thought of keeping, you know, uh, RJs only behind the, the mic and not exposing them. Uh, and we said, okay, these are commoners. Now we need to get them in front. And there's a curiosity of a seeing uh, the you know faces behind the voice, and also the their fashion statement. So we uh, we came up with this thought called um, sub, uh, most stylish RJ of the town oh. as a thought. So we said, okay, let's do this, and we will uh, you know we will uh, do a photo shoot of them with this cloth, revealing these people to the common people and they will vote you know across the city which is their force and and this radio station will also promote promote was a thought so we had a challenge you know really yeah. because you know a the moment you have most stylish rj of the town then it's a competition between one radio station and another radio station so right. what they said we can't do it you know not and second was the thought which i said you know rj's uh, putting uh, faces to voice is is a challenge and hence will not be able to do so yeah, I mean it was a challenge, but for some, you know, some ways we got through. Uh, we asked them, you know, this is very interesting, and we should do and stuff like that. And I think uh, the amount and because this thought was very inspired, and I was very attached to this thought, and I wanted to ensure, uh, you know, that this needs to be done, and we successfully did it. And after that, I think uh, so. Of course, I've left uh, Future Group long back, almost now 12 years. Uh, so as to say, but this campaign continued and continued for a long time, building equity of a brand, uh, you know, and RJs were more than happy. And I have to mind you, there were some RJs who were very good looking. And they had never had a problem to uh, put a face to their voice. So, um, you know, and that was a lot of challenges, something which was not done any, uh, ever. There was a thought, there were core thought of yes. who's your hero. You know, uh, what do you want about your hero? You know, while I know hero, but I've never seen my the face. And of course, and brand actually utilizes that very well uh, to communicate, um, you know, the whole offering. Of course, thereafter, then, you know, brand has budget and then we move to bigger celebrities to endorse the product. But very, very interesting activity that remained very close to my heart, uh, even now. One more example at Himalaya, uh, more specifically, so I... I was handling oral care, you know, I had launched uh, the oral care range, expanded the oral care range that Himalaya had as a marketeer. And we had different offerings. We had uh, a, a gel toothpaste, which is for freshness. We had a family toothpaste and complete care. Then we have sensitive toothpaste and sensitivity as, as a segment just started then with sensory leading. And we had one more offering in whitening toothpaste, uh, which we had learned in branded Himalaya sparkling white toothpaste. And uh, so, the very interesting insight that we figured out saying that, uh, you know, whiter, uh, so yellow teeth is a embarrassment, a social embarrassment uh, for you. Uh, but, you know, the yellow teeth as a problem is something you don't realize. Mm -hmm. You know, it is something either your wife or your girlfriend will tell you. And we had an extensive research around that. 
or yeah. you know your close friend will tell you you know yeah. and push me for example i am talking to you guja for a long yeah. time you don't even observe my lot right, right. <laughs> there are some facts about it yeah. but when when you observe and somebody highlights you then it's a big problem and you need to resolve that because it's a part of hygiene and yes people at a oral level are very very hygiene conscious so we said okay great insight but how do you communicate that in the uh, you know communication mm. um because it will not happen you know socially and it will only happen uh, you know from your loved one and stuff like that but for you to create and we as a marketer of course we want to you know slightly make problem larger than life and it was a challenge and having said that we also wanted to ensure that it remains in a real world it should not happen are to kuch bhi dikha rahe aisa to nahi hota hai right so that was a challenge ahead of us and then we came up with a very interesting creative uh, saying that uh, yeah, so the biggest pro, you know thought was big idea was daato ka pila ban aapko bhale nazar nahi aata hai logo ko aata hai but logo ko nazar aata kaise how do like i said you know how do you tell a story is also important so you know in the creative and of course, i think we can just show a creative first and then sure. i'll talk about Sure. Okay, let's go. Mm, ready, ready. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, second, first, first second word. Mm-hmm. Castle. Oh, 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 house. Transport. Acha, wait, wait. Chalo, first word. Mobile. Me batao. Yellow. No. Daanton ka pila pan aapko bhale hi nazar na hai. Dekhne walon ko zaroor nazar aata hai, Shalu ji. Fresh hai Himalaya sparkling white. India ka pehla whitening toothpaste with plant enzyme technology, jisme hai papaya aur pineapple ke khas tatva. Return of the snow. Why? Kudrati is ready. Without chemical bleach, just two weeks. Yeah. So if you look at this creative, you know, it was very important that the yellow teeth realization only happened by accident. Right. Okay. And, मतलब you know that this person has yellow teeth, but you do you will never say that in upfront in on her face or his face. It can only happen accidentally. And after accidentally, it, if if it has happened accidentally, there's also a moment where the person who's saying it is feeling bad about it are yaar maine nahi bolna chahiye these are all small small you know elements of communication and like i mentioned how do you communicate is also important without offending and then you make a story and now after this campaign we did it did wonders for us our business really grew uh, himalaya himalaya is was a face wash company it was not known much beyond face wash this campaign really gave us entry into a new emerging segment in uh, in in um, whitening and hence we got entry to grocery who actually stock uh, st- you know stocks uh, toothpaste as a category and once sparkling white as a brand went the other variant uh, you know we could keep pushing of course when toothpaste went shampoo went soap went of course face wash could level so it opened door to grocery as a as a as a trade which was important and uh, it was very critical for us to be different from what you know other competition are saying which is all about it's very also another thing is very different story yeah. it's not a a generic toothpaste story and if i were to talk about one more toothpaste then it would be actually assigned as it as a you know it's a ad communication for a leader brand not for you so that remains a challenge so while ensuring you have a differentiation do you have a like i mentioned a you know a differentiation story does it sound real also Mm-hmm. is it relevant for the category i mean and there are a lot of brand who actually they have a great story but the product category is very forced and that should not happen that's a critical you have to have a very smooth transition uh, so you know i think that's a critical element which we got um, you know uh, uh, got it here very and we executed it very successfully uh, and i'm sure there are some lot of nepal work that we've been doing and which are very very strong inside based but the execution element to ensure that it sounds real it doesn't sound fake is actually equally important fantastic uh, thank you for sharing these beautiful examples with us today uh, now that you've been traveling to nepal quite often due to your added responsibility you know i just wanted to know what are the key differences or similarities between nepal and indian consumers which could be relevant for a brand marketer marketers like us yeah with a lot of ways uh, custom and cultures are very very similar between india and nepal so at the times it's difficult to really you know identify those differences and um, i'm glad that you know i have a relationship with 
you know people like you who have been extensively traveling in both nepal and uh, more than me between india and nepal and they have also played a critical role in identifying those differences um uh, but you know something and whenever i travel to nepal of course i make a point that consciously my eyes and uh, ears are open to you know uh, pick up anything that you know i can uh, uh, you know see the difference in fact as a part of that i have also uh, have planned to actually visit some college interact with some student that's been our core audiences uh, to, to understand the differences you know something which you know slightly matlab i have more hypothesis than really have a, a conclusion on this is i i think the ne- nepalese youth in particular have lot of aspiration for them and for the country yeah uh, which i think is unique and uh, their willingness to contribute towards that is also high right. uh, so watch out for this new nepalese who would actually ensure that nepal actually uh, yeah, you know grows much faster in coming months and years uh, and there are a lot of interesting stories and in- interesting insights Uh, which would come from there where uh, which brand can leverage i don't want to be specifics here but i think this is a space which everyone should watch out for very nice fantastic uh at himalaya you know like uh, you've taken the initiative to produce uh, all your tv commercials in nepal you know i can see that mm-hmm. and i know you have uh, also traveled to nepal for uh, the first tv advertisement yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, about the yeah. job and uh, and recently there was a launch of new tvc for himalayan neem face wash yeah this was produced in nepal yeah uh, you have an opportunity to interact with uh, i think i'm sure with production crews you know uh, talents and creative uh, minds in nepal you know what do you have to say about the local talent here the production facilities and eventually the output of the work you know because you've been already you know like using them to make uh, mm-hmm. commercials in nepal now yeah, yeah honestly speaking i was slightly more uh, skeptical to start with whether we should uh, you know produce uh, communication in nepal uh, but i am i am i am extremely glad you know to, to not means my word i am you know highly impressed uh, if i have to say that uh, the kind of output uh, that we've seen uh, you know and both the tvc that we've done and very soon we will make third uh, so you know great work i think great production value good efficiencies cost efficiencies that is uh, the key advantage that we are in fact you know so impressed and this also india team is also impressed in lot of ways that we might explore some of the india work getting you know outsourced to nepal so uh, there are, that says it all i think <laughs> you know and good uh, talent good uh, you know production value um, so i think there is a, there is a bright future of more projects coming from india to nepal is not only nepal but sure i think we'll show them the film as well the one that yeah 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 sure didi hajur ko jasto healthy skin ko lagi ke garu ma yo enu na first pimple a bhane tesma te sab le thari thari ka advice dira chan video wala advice hashtag wala advice internet ma ta chan fuchu in her sab le advice matra dinchan tar in her pimple experts hai nan मेरे लागी तो हजर एक्सपर्ट हो एक्सपर्ट तो मैं हूँ तेरा पिंपल एक्सपर्ट चाहे यो हो हिमालय ब्यूटीफाइंग नीम फेस वॉश ये एक्सपर्ट का सरी फुच्चू यो क्लिनिकली प्रूवन हो इसमें सा नीम का बेसार को एंटीबैक्टीरियल कोन जस्ले पिंपल हटाऊँ सा रिस्किन लाइफ बनाऊँ सा एकदम हेल्दी इतनी कई औरा लाखों दिदी मैंने लिए इसमें विश्वास करें को इसमें जोड़ी है को सा हिमालय को नब्बे बरस को विश्वास र भरोसा दीदी हज़ कुछ ऐसे हेल्दी स्किन वाओ एक्सपोर्ट को कमाल है ना दीदी को कमाल दीदी को हिमालय प्यूरिफाइंग नीम फेस वॉश पिंपल फ्री हेल्दी स्किन को एक्सपर्ट एस अ सक्सेसफुल ब्रांड मार्केटर इन द रीजन व्हाट इज़ द टॉप फाइव की लर्निंग्स फॉर द पीपल एस्पायरिंग टू हैव सिमिलर कैरियर लाइक योरसेल्फ यू नो कैन यू शेयर सम डूज एंड डोंट uh you know uh, one is uh, i think it's critical to understand that when you market something you are also a consumer so do not let consumer in you die you know and there are enough categories but for example fmcg category is perhaps relevant to everyone if you are if the answer is you will not buy a certain product if this is what has been communicated to you 
then why would your consumer buy so i think the fundamental root is let not your con- consumer in you die that's a rule number 1 uh, that i have for you uh, second thing is uh, earlier i mentioned the the difference you know in our attempt to promote differentiation we should pay attention whether it is even relevant to consumer matlab uh-huh. it's great to say that okay i have that and i have this and that but if consumer you know is is do not find a value and if it is not going to change his life he will not buy you as simple as that and every marketer the ultimate objective is to drive business so that's the i think question number that number 2 uh, third is i think you know as a as a marketer you should always be restless and not static and i am not saying from a point of view of uh, you know restless uh, you know no, does not mean that you should change consumer posi- uh, brand positioning you know every month not like that i am saying you should be restless to do new things on the brand you should say that you know things are happening what is the new opportunity that brings uh, you know as a mandate in my team you know they always think every month if not every day but at least every month we said what is that new thing as a marketer we doing mm-hmm. and are we happy about it and how what do it uh, and after doing it if we have done something in last month what did we learn you know okay. so i think that restlessness of doing something on the brand allows you to also you know have your eyesight open on multiple opportunity that you can find in and around you if you say you know, okay it's happening is running and it, and it's all, not only when the brand is doing bad or brand is doing great you know or brand is static mm-hmm. it has to be you know uniform you know a brand because and the great you know st- the, 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 the few of the biggest brand that we have seen in our lives have literally dead today and my, my childhood there are some brand of course we are pretty oh. much similar age so yeah there are a lot of brands who are actually literally dead because they did not evolve right. and i am sure you know some contribution you know a bigger larger contribution actually goes from uh, from a marketer because marketer was not open to what things are happening around them to evolve and that sure. also brings from a point of view of are you confined or comfortable in your space or you are looking for opportunities for brand to grow all the time and that i think that's a very important trait um and it can be a culture it can be a culture of course for the organization but it is individually driven so it's very marketer led that marketer should you know imbibe that um, you know character in themselves if they want to be a successful marketer and you know that how many times we keep you know i randomly call you aisa kar sakte you randomly call me that restlessness is very very critical in building a brand um fourth one is you know uh, you know i again mention track best brands you know across globe you know figure out what they are doing you should have a list of five brands in your uh, you know thing which you want to track you know how they are and how they are evolved a brand story and that can inspire you to write your own story and be you know brahma for your own brands in yeah. future um last not the least but uh, you know as a rule never repeat mistakes never if you learn something so it's a it's a asset that is with you ensure that you do new mistakes that's fine yeah. don't you know repeat the old mistakes so i think there are five rules uh, you know one uh, like i mentioned don't con- let your consumer die in you relevance is more important uh, third is um, uh, uh, what was it uh, restless be restless you know fourth one i said track global brand and fifth do not make mistakes what you've already done do new mistakes that's fine fantastic fantastically said you know do new mistakes but don't repeat the old mistakes old. you know and for all these learnings you know even i have learned a lot of new things from you today i'm going to try and implement that for myself as well any parting note as that we are coming to an end of the show uh, as a marketers you know like uh, uh, in nepal what are the areas we should improve uh, to do some great advertising work so i think nepal uh, you know is a is a uh, is a country which actually uh, and i uh, and some time back actually i was saying that nepal is uh, in my earlier conversation with you if you remember nepal is 5 years back what india was yes but i think what india took 5 years to grow nepal would not take that much it will take much lesser right you know, and it's a it's a country uh, and this is this will primarily happen because of the youth of the country 
Yeah. Uh, because their exposure to outside world is much much broader, uh, and their also willingness to, like I mentioned, do good for themselves and for society and for country. Now all these aspect will ensure that the country moves much faster. Now, as a as a as a marketing brand, uh, a marketer or a, or a media planner or a or a creative person, I think one has to put a piece to this change. If you can crack that, then you are successful. own whatever role uh, you uh, represent because specifically talk about uh, you know uh, advertising uh, and communication i think i would want to see more consumer led consumer insight led uh, you know communication uh, so, that i still see uh, you know a lot of scope there uh, and it would and the whole consumer insight with actually led from the thought which i mentioned earlier of so, youth people how do you put a pace of pace with this youngster and what do we learn and lot of interesting insight will come from there which will go into a, a stronger impactful communication in years to come and i'm sure there are some brand who are actively doing it already and like i said you know you should also learn from you know the best brands in the country and uh, there is no harm in learning and we we do learning and we have these interaction happening on these brands specifically with you at at times so i think you know i would want to see more consumer let inside communication in coming coming years thank you sushil for all these inputs and thank you for being with us today and sharing your knowledge and experiences you know for the uh, for the work that you've been doing for so many years um, uh, thank you very much thank you thank you jay it's been an honor and pleasure to catch up with you thank you so much